Good morning. It's good to see all of you today. Hey, I'm excited today, and you'll see why. But, boy, that was a delayed reaction on my... Okay. We are talking about a strong net today. We're in the third part of this series called Strong. And today we're talking about making the net strong. Making the net strong. And so I have a big announcement today. And the, the announcement is this, that we are moving. We're changing location, and we are moving to this place. This is, this is the uh, Stone Center, and it's at Campus 805. Anybody ever been to Campus 805? Yep, there's a lot happening at Campus 805, and there's going to be more happening there because we are moving to Campus 805, and we're moving to this building. This is the Old Stone Middle School, and you can park in the front parking lot here, or you can go around to the back. If you go around to the back, you can go directly into what will be our worship center, uh, which is the cafeteria there. Our offices will be located in this building upstairs, and, um, and we'll have storage there also. And the amazing thing about this, well, there's so many amazing things about this. Uh, these lights will be permanently mounted. We want to put those up every week. Thank God. Oh, praise, praise Jesus. The lights will be permanently mounted. Uh, the only thing that we should have to, to put up every week is our sound system. And if I can talk them into letting us permanently install that, we won't even have to to do that, but I'm, I'm not pushing it. I've, I've been pushing a little bit, and I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait on that, but <clears throat> we're very excited about this, and let me tell you, this is how good God is, okay? This is going to cost us less than we're paying now. Now, come on. Come on and give God a hand. Listen, that is, that is a miracle to me. Uh, this was our first choice, by the way. When we, when we first started, this was our very first choice. We went over there, and we looked at the facility, and we wanted the facility, but we knew it was expensive, and for whatever reason, we just couldn't get everything to work out. But we have a person in our church named Emily Riley. She's not here today, but Emily uh, makes things happen. That's, that's what she does. And she got it in her head that she was going to find us a permanent location uh, a couple weeks ago, and she went looking, and somewhere in the process, she was able to get us into this place. So next time you see Emily, um, I want you to give her a big hug and a big thank you for what she did to get us here. And I just, I am just so excited about this, and you should be too. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so what do we do? We know what we do, right? We know what we do. We worship God. And we help people. We worship God and help people. We know what we do. All right? We know why we do it. Because Jesus had a vision when he started his ministry. And this is how he started his ministry. He went to the synagogue and he said this. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Has sent me to proclaim freedom to the, uh, for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free. This is why we do this. This is Jesus' mission this is Jesus' idea, and so that's the helping people part. Jesus said that the two greatest commandments were to love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so we took that, those two greatest commandments, and we put them into an action, and that is to worship God and to help people. That's what we do. All right, so today we're going to talk about how we begin. Now, we've been going here about four months, and we have, uh, uh, we've, you know, we've, we've been doing church every Sunday, but that's about all we've been doing is just, we've just been worshiping together, and um, this next week, next week, we're going to launch our purpose groups, and I think it's very exciting because we are going to build groups around a purpose, and if you, if you want Bible study, if you feel like that's something that, that God is leading you to, you can have a purpose group that's Bible study. But we're not going to just have all Bible study groups. We are going to have groups that are built around a purpose. There are so many people already who are very excited about the groups that they're going to 
uh, about the groups that they're going to form. And I'm excited about that too, and we'll, we'll tell you a little bit more about that next week. Uh, but we are about to begin some great things. And we're going to the Stone Center. We are going to begin, really, our mission. And, um, and it's what Jesus talked about, to, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the oppressed free. And, we're, and you'll hear more about that today. But I want to start uh, at the beginning with two stories that are very similar. And they're, they're two stories that are at the beginning of things. The first story was at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Uh, he uh, met Peter one day, Peter, James, and John. He met Peter, and he uh, got into Peter's boat, Simon Peter's boat. And there was a crowd forming there uh, at the sea, and he, he said to Peter, he said, uh, push out from the shore just a bit and let me preach to these people. And so they, he got in Peter's boat, they pushed out from the shore, and Jesus began to preach to the people. And after that, he said to Peter, he said, uh, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. And Peter said, but master, he said, we have fished all night long and we caught nothing. And he said, but nevertheless, at your word, we will launch out and let down the nets. So they did. And when they let down their nets, they couldn't believe what happened there were so many fish that the net began to break. And that's important. The net began to break. And so they called their partners in, from another boat, called them over and said, hey, come help us get these fish. So they began to take the fish out of the net. They're, they're pulling in the net. They're taking the fish, and they're putting, them, putting those fish in the two boats. There were so many fish that the two boats began, began to sink. That's a lot of fish. And so when they got to the shore, Jesus said to those three, Peter, James, and John, and I think Andrew may have been there, but he said, come and follow me and I will teach you how to catch people. Come and follow me and I will teach you how to catch people. Now, this is not the type of fishing where there's a bait and a hook in the middle of it. Understand that the gospel is not bait with a hook in it. The gospel does not have a hook in it. The good news is good news. There's no hook. It's good news. The type of fishing that they did was with a net. It was where uh, the, uh, they, they let out the net and it brought all the fish together. Do you know that God wants us to be together? That's what he wants. And the fish, of course, symbolizes people. That's what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about people. Okay, that's the first story. And that was at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Now, the second story is very much like the first story. But it was after the resurrection. It was as the disciples were beginning their ministry. And so... The disciples, Peter, James, and John, these three guys were together again. And then there were a couple of other disciples. And, and Peter said, I'm going fishing. And they all said, well, I'm, we're going to go with you. So they went out and they fished all night, but they didn't catch anything. And the next morning, Jesus was standing on the, sh on the shore. And he yelled out to them. He said, have you caught anything? And they said, no. And they didn't know that it was Jesus. He said, Cast your net on the right side of the boat. So they cast their net on the right side of the boat. And they pulled in a catch that they could not get into the boat. But John goes to the trouble to say that the net did not break. John gives us details. He said the net did not break. And when they were able to drag the boat and the fish to the shore, they counted the fish. And the scripture says that there were a hundred and 53 large fish. 153 large fish. Now, I've read a lot of, a lot of uh, commentaries about what people say about what this number 153 means. I don't think it means anything. I think it means that God counts us. 
He counts. Every one of us counts. There's no rounding up. There's no rounding down. 150, some random number, 153. Not 150, not 155. 153. God cares about each one. Everyone is counted. This is how God feels about us. So listen, um, there are 18 species of fish in the Sea of Galilee, and there are a lot of small ones. There are sardines. There are fish that are about the size of your hand that are a, a type of tilapia. And then there is uh, this fish called a biny, and it's a type of carp, and it's a large fish. And they say that these fish average between 13 and 15 pounds. If you do the math, 153 of these fish would be well over 2,000 pounds. So here's the moral of the story. When Jesus tells you to cast your net, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day. When Jesus says to let down your net, that's good. That's really good. And a year, year and a half ago, uh, before we had ever announced to anybody that we were going to start this church, uh, Lene and I were trying to come up with a name for the church. And we had a lot of dopey names for the church, and I won't share those with you. You would just laugh. Um, but, but we couldn't come up with a name. And then early one morning, it was, I, don't know, I don't know whether I was asleep or whether I was awake, but I can tell you this, that I heard this inside my soul. I heard it. Cast your net on the other side of the boat. And it was so startling that it woke me up. And I looked at the clock, and I think it was 4.15 or 4.20 or something like that. And, and I was so excited about what I had just heard, cast your net, because I'd never thought of that name. And, and I realized that that was going to be the name of our church, The Net. And so God has told us to cast our net. And I'm excited because when Jesus says to cast your net, it's going to be a great day. All right? So I, I've got some marching orders that I feel like God has given me. Thank you very much. We're going to pass these out to you. I love lists, and I've given you two lists. The first list is it's called a strong net, and it's a to-do list. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and... As they're being passed out, I'm going to go ahead and start with this. And I have my glasses today so I can read it. All right. So the first, the first item on the to-do list says pray. Use your prayer list uh, to pray daily for the net. Now, why do we pray? This, is, this comes uh, from 2 Chronicles, and it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive, I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Is that not what we want to happen here in Huntsville, Alabama? The vision for the net is to change, change this city. And in order for that change to take place, we need for God to forgive our sins and heal our land. This is why we pray, y'all. This is why we pray. Now, flip it over. Prayer list. Let's go through that. Pray for God to bless our effort to change our city through worshiping God and helping people. Pray that God will open opportunities for you to share your faith and invite others to join us at the net. Pray that we will be able to reach and engage more people through social media. Pray that God will bless our church attendance by drawing people to the net through engagement in social media, our personal relationships, and personal invitation. Pray that God will bless us financially so that we could help people all around our city. Now, I'm asking you, as faithful people of the net, I'm asking you to live with this prayer list. I'm asking you to, to take it and take it seriously. And put it in a place where you get quiet with God every day. Or if you don't get quiet with God every day, here is a good way to do it. Take this list and pray through this. It won't take but a few minutes. 
But I believe that God is, is, is asking us to pray for the net. Second item on the to-do list. Flip it back over. Social media. Did you know there's a scripture in the Bible about social media? Did you know that? I found it. And this is it. Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk face to face. Get it? Facebook. <laughs> that our joy may be complete. There are a lot of people in our church that have a lot to say, but they don't want to use paper and ink. This is my social media scripture. Okay? Um, so you didn't know that, but, but uh, God knew all about it way back then. Okay, so um, social media. Here, th- if you'll do these two things, if you'll do these two things, and get wives, get your husbands to do, make them, make them, make them do it. If they have a Facebook page, make them do this. Um, and your children, your children have Facebook pages, ask your children to do the same. That is to invite your friends to like the Nets Facebook page. You can go on uh, the Nets Facebook page, and I don't know, Cheryl, wh- wh- how do you do this? How do you do this? Do you, is, there a, uh, is there a button or something to click? I know on mine, I'm an administrator, so it's easy for me, but uh, there is, there is, what? I'll get back to you. Wow, I didn't even know there was a select all button. Okay. So uh, we will, I'll, I'll send that out in the uh, weekly email this week. Uh, so, so invite your friends to like Net, the Nets uh, Facebook page. Go to our Facebook page and write a review. Write a good one. Give us five stars. Go, go to your Facebook page. Go to our Facebook page and write a review. Uh, that will have, If you will do those two things, it will really, really increase our Facebook presence. Uh, Cheryl, I asked her to do this a few weeks ago. We had 50 likes, like overnight, 50 likes. So uh, I'm asking you to do that. Now, give. There actually is a scripture about this in the Bible, and it comes from Malachi. And this is my favorite one about giving. There, there are a lot of scriptures about giving, but I love this one because it says, bring all the tithes. Some uh, versions say bring the whole tithe. Into the storehouse, which is the church, that there may be food in my house. That there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Try me in this. It's the only place in the whole Bible that God says, try me. Try me in this. So uh, I think this is a very unique scripture. Let's talk about it just a minute. Bring the whole tithe or bring all the tithes into the storehouse or the church. What is a tithe? A tithe is the first 10% of your income. Now, that seems like a lot to some people. But let me tell you, uh, the Scripture says that that first 10%, if you belong to God, that first 10% does not even belong to you. That's what he says. Uh, And so, he says to bring it into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. And this is the best part. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. I love that. Try me in this. See if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you that you cannot contain. I'm going to tell you that This is not always money. Sometimes it is money, but this is not always money. And thank goodness it's not always money because we need a whole lot more than money in our lives. We need God to bless us in all kinds of areas. And what what the tithe does is it says to God, my heart belongs to you. My heart belongs to you. And if you don't believe it, God, if you don't believe that my heart belongs to you, here is my tithe. This is my tithe to prove that my heart is yours. Now, I would prefer that you bring your tithe into this storehouse. But if you think that this is just a ploy to get your money, then pick out 
another place. Pick out another storehouse and just try it and see. Try God and see if he will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you that you cannot contain. Uh, Lene and I, I'm going to just tell you, Lene is stingy, okay? Lene is stingy. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and, and let you know that. But, but Lene and I have had this tug of war over our whole marriage. Uh, I want to give, and she wants to hold. She wants to hold on to it. But we have begun, we started this a couple of years ago. We began to tithe our money, and then over this past year or so, we have gone way beyond tithing. And so I can tell you from experience that God will open up the windows of heaven. He will pour out a blessing. And like I said, it's not always money. But he will pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. All right, next on the list, attendance. Oh, I left this out. Okay, uh, this was the second one on give. Automate your giving through push pay. This is so simple. If you will go on um, the app store and just search push pay, this uh, app will come up and you can load that to your phone. And all you have to do, this is the easiest way to do it. All you have to do is put your information in one time. And every time you go back to that app on your phone, it will ask you how much you want to give. And you can put the amount in there. You can automate it so that you don't forget. You can automate it and make it once a month. You can make it once a week. How, uh, however often that you would like to do that, you can automate your giving. That is so great for us to know that this certain amount is coming in every month. We can plan that way. Okay, now let's move on. Attendance. This is what the scripture says, Hebrews 10. It says, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up, meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. God wants us to attend. He wants us to come. He wants us to worship together. It's important to him that we come together. It's important to him that our heart belongs to him if we are going to be the prevailing church that God has called us to be, we are going to have to do the things on this list. The prevailing church that God has in mind will not happen, it will not happen, unless we do the things on this list. This is a description of the people that God envisions us to be. So, uh, it's important to God that we, uh, that we attend. Now, invite. Invite. I'm going to have uh, our ushers pass out some invite cards. These cards just make it easy for you. But here's something that is kind of astounding to me. And that is that survey after survey after survey has been done with people who are not churched. Uh, I'd like for everybody to take, take however many you want but at least take two. So survey after survey after survey over the years have been done asking non-church people, if someone asked you to come to church with them, would you go? And the lowest statistic that I found was 63%. Anywhere you'll find in these surveys, surveys anywhere from 60 to 97%. People that do not go to church that are surveyed say that they would come if someone would invite them. And uh, even the nuns, not the N U N S, but the N O N E S, the nuns, that is a descriptive word for people who ha want nothing to do with church. We call them the nuns. And even those people said that if someone invited them to church, that they would come. So God wants us to invite. Now, Jesus told uh, this story to the Pharisees one day, and this is what he said. He said, uh, a certain man wanted to give a banquet. And so he made preparations for a banquet, and he sent out the invitations to all his guests. When the banquet was ready and it was time to come to the party, he sent a servant out to all the people that were invited and asked them to come that the banquet was ready. But they all had excuses. One said, I bought a field, 
and I have to go and see the field, so I can't come. One said, I just bought some oxen, and I need to go take them to the field and try them out. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. And so when the servant came back and reported this to the master, the master was very angry, and he said, go out and get the poor and the lame and the blind and bring them to the banquet. And I, I just think this is interesting. Jesus says all these things. I think it's so interesting. The servant said, we have already invited them. See, they're already invited. They're already invited. Jesus never, never left them out. He's always about the poor, the lame, the blind, those that are, that are in need. Jesus is always about them. And he said, and the servant said, we've already invited them, but we still have room. And he said, well, go. This is what he said. He said, so then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. Go out and compel them so that my house will be full. Two things we've learned today that Jesus wants to happen with his house. He wants us to tithe so that there will be food in his house. And he wants us to go out and compel people to come in because he wants his house to be full. This is our God. This is Jesus. This is what he wants. So what I want to leave you with today, I want to leave you with this card. And I want you to take this card home with you. And I want you to take it seriously. And I want you to do this prayer every day. And I want you to, to be serious about your prayer for the net. Because when you pray this prayer for the net, you're actually including yourself. Because the net is an organization but it's people. The church is people. Um, I believe that when Jesus looks out over the city of Huntsville, very much like Ezekiel, he sees a valley of dry bones. You remember this story? You remember this prophecy? Ezekiel said, um, and he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. And he says, so I began to prophesy. And as I was prophesying, I heard a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked and flesh began to cover, cover them and then skin covered the flesh. And he said, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to him, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe. And he said that these bones are Israel. And he said, go and prophesy to Israel that I will bring them up out of their graves. And I will put my spirit in them and they will live that's what the net is about. God is sending us with this prophecy. He is sending us with this message to the city of Huntsville to say, look, you might feel like your bones are dry. You might feel like that you are dead inside. But as we reach into places where there is no light and we speak the words of God over this city where there is no hope, and there is no life, we are going to need a strong net. And when we move to the Stone Center, Campus 805, we are going to need to be strong. That's coming up in three weeks. Three weeks, y'all. We're moving. Our first service there will be September the 10th. September the 10th. So we need to have a strong net. So this is, this is what I'm asking you to do. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus.